Hi, Mike Damish here, and I'm the founder of the Center for Respect. This video is for those of you who are looking to use Zoom or some video conferencing platform. So we're showing how to use Zoom because it's so great an option and they have a free option, which is beautiful. And this video is for anybody who's looking to do that, whether that be to teach now virtually, to work virtually, if you're a business trying to bring people together virtually, this video is for you. What we did is we did some live Zoom meetings teaching people how to use Zoom, and you're gonna get to see the recording of that. So you're gonna to get to see people interacting using actual Zoom. You're gonna to get to see me behind the scenes showing how to do everything. And this is what I do for a living. I speak and I conduct trainings around the world for US military, for middle schools, high schools, universities, and corporations. It's what I do. And so we conduct trainings virtually online. So we can provide trainings to people live like this, but live as in you can talk back and forth versus watching a recorded video. And we're gonna show you how to do all of that in this video. And it's for free because we think this is so important to get out to those of you who need these resources right now, especially those in education who are working so hard to make an impact on children's lives, youth lives, young adults' lives. We wanna give you these resources to be as helpful as possible. Hope you find this video both helpful and fun. Thanks. Hello. Everybody should hear me working nice and smooth here. To get started, we'll let everybody come in. I have to admit everybody as they come in. So we'll give it a minute here to do that, and then we are gonna rock and roll. The one rule of when you're in doing a Zoom meeting like this is to make sure that you immediately get into content, give people what they're looking for, and you don't sit and chatter for a long time because people will get bored and jump out. So you wanna give them what they came there for, whatever that is, whatever you're trying to do, whether it's teaching, whether you're trying to, uh, your business trying to do something special for this, you wanna make sure that you're giving them content right away. So we're only gonna take the first minute or two here to let people in. And then I'll be letting them in after that, but I'm gonna just start. And if they come in late, they come in late. That's the only difference. So I can see all of you. You should see me with a white background that's a center for respect. Uh, it does work best if you're doing this with all of your videos on, because then you get to experience it like you would if you were doing an actual Zoom experience. So if you're able to, please do that. Please uh, check that yours is on. I am switching to, uh, let me just switch here. I'm checking my own sound settings here so you can hear me all well. Hopefully you're hearing me well. If you are, just do a thumbs up. I can watch you all as a gallery. I can see you all. I'm gonna be sharing my screen throughout this. So you're gonna all get to see what I'm seeing as we go along. Right now, we're just letting everybody in. It will take a minute to do this and then I will get rolling. Uh, so excellent. And we are just letting people roll in. While you're rolling in, for those of you who aren't aware, I'll give you a little background. I know some of you were introduced to this through people on social, uh, social media. Some of you are introduced to this on LinkedIn. Some of you were introduced to this through emails that you got from me. So not everybody knows me because some of you found out about this from another teacher who knows me or someone who knows me who knows me kind of thing. Uh, so because of that, while I'm letting everybody into the meeting, and I'm gonna show you all how to do that later, uh, because I'm doing that, I'm gonna let you know who I am. My name is Mike Damish. I'm the founder of the Center of Respect, and I speak all over the world about creating a culture of respect. I do a lot of work with middle schools and high schools on creating relationships based on consent, respect, respecting boundaries, uh, reducing sexual assault. And I do the same for the US military. And then I do a lot of work for parenting organizations and then corporate work on corporate culture of respect. So while everybody's coming in here, I'm just sort of filling the time by giving you a little background. Uh, for those of you who don't know what I do at all, today is not about that. I'm not going to be teaching any of those topics today at all. This is all going to be about how to do Zoom. A few of you were with me this morning, and I said, come back, because we learned a few cool tricks since this morning uh, that it's going to make this a whole lot easier for those of you here this morning. You're going to get to see the behind the scenes we couldn't show you this morning. We figured out what caused that. And we're going to teach everybody those mistakes today so you don't make the ones I made earlier. Uh, excellent. Now, what I'm able to do, and I'm going to right now share my screen so you can all see what I'm seeing. That way, uh, you'll get used to how this works as we go along. So I'm going to go to a share screen. I'm going to go to what's called my desktop, and, and that's what I'm using for this. And we're going to find out in a second if you all see this. So if you're seeing my screen, 
you see me, but you also see a little picture of like four of you. On the bottom, you see buttons that say share, polling, manage participants below me in the shared screen. If you're seeing that, give me a thumbs up. All right, so now you're all seeing behind the scenes. This is how I'm operating the meeting. So we've got people trying to get in and now I'm gonna let them all in, the poor people who have been waiting. Uh, there's two. See, now I have it in the middle of the screen and you can see there's two people waiting. I can choose to not let them in if I don't know who they are. So you can choose who comes in or I can hit it mid all, which is what I'm gonna do in this case, instead of individually hitting them all because everybody that has this link intentionally has this link. So I'm gonna keep doing that throughout. So you're seeing behind the scenes now. I couldn't do that this morning. So we were sort of trying to explain it where now you get to see it. So I can see who the participants are. I can see if there's any chat going on. So now what I'm gonna to do to start is to show you all how you can participate today by what you're seeing on your screen. You should all see a few things and that you're gonna follow my mouse right here and that'll make it easier to do that. You're gonna notice I'm pushing a button that says annotate on the top. I'm doing that so it's easier for you to follow me on the screen. So I use that little red button and if you follow the red button, I'm gonna show you some things. Over here is mute. You all should have that on your phones or your computers too. On yours, it, it probably says uh, right now that you're already muted. So yours would say, if anything, unmute. I set this up so you're all unmuted right off the bat so you don't have to worry about it. I mean, you're all muted, sorry. So you don't have to worry about doing that. So you all, when you get accepted into this meeting, you're immediately muted, all right? So you can all set it up that way. I'm gonna show you how to do that a little bit later. So that's the mute button. If you want to ask me a question during today, try to wait and see if I address it when we're talking about that. If I don't, then unmute yourself and say, Mike, what about this? We're just showing you the beginning buttons right now. You're also next to that going to either see video, like start video or stop video, or just a picture right there of a video camera. I've got my little red flasher showing you that. So hopefully you're doing video because that's what you're going to do in real life. And it's, you're gonna get a better experience today if you're using your video you're gonna, when we do other stuff later on. Here's the cool part about video. I can choose what camera I'm using. So this is a little free thing called eyeglasses. I think they might charge, I don't know that it's free anymore. They might charge 10 to $20. And it allows you to use your computer camera, but allows you to adjust the lighting and stuff on your own computer camera. So that's what you see there. But a lot of people use webcams and they put them on top of their screen, like right over the center of the screen, like if I'm supposed to cover mine right there, uh, it would be right above that, or they put it on a tripod right above that. So it's center screen, right above, so you're looking at the people. This is not a webcam, this is just my computer camera. So if you can test, and your computer camera does this well, and this is an old computer I'm using, this is a five-year-old Mac. If it does this well, don't go out and spend $100 on a, on a camera, you don't need to spend $100 on or you can spend $700 on them. Save yourself that time so you don't have to do that. But you're also gonna see on here, it says video settings or choose a virtual background. You might notice that there's white behind me and my logo behind me. No, I don't have a wall in my house with my logo painted on it so I can sit here and do Zoom sessions. This is what's called a green screen behind me, but I'm not some big 10 foot high wall green screen. I'm on a little five foot one that covers up my wife's, wife's desk so she can leave it all messy if she wants. I can do this and it doesn't impact her life. So right now I'm gonna reveal for all of you what that looks like. We've got more people trying to get in, so let me let them in. Um, if one of you wants to, I can give you a cool experience. If one of you is willing to say, Mike, I'll be the co-host, I will make you a co-host and you'll be able to let everybody in while I'm talking it'll actually pop up and say, admit these people. If you want to experience what that's like, does anybody want a shot at that, at being the co-host? If you do, just hit unmute. So go over by your picture and hit unmute. If you want to try that and say, Mike, I'll co-host and I'll make you the co-host. And all you're doing is letting people in. Don't worry, I won't shift your camera. I won't make you suddenly lead the conversation, but it gives you a chance to see what it's like to see people popping up. If nobody's comfortable with that, that's okay. I'll, no one's jumping in here. I'll be the guinea pig, Mike. All right. Thanks, Sherry. Appreciate that. So I'm going to make Sherry my co-host. And now by me doing that, when somebody tries to come in, they'll pop up on her screen too, not just mine. 
uh, uh, but I'll go back and I'll mute Sherry so she doesn't have to worry about if you know her kids come in or they want to talk or something like that. So there we go. Excellent. So now what we were doing is I was starting to sh explain whether you want to do a green screen or not. You can do green screens for like $15. You can buy them nowadays. So if you're somebody at home that says, geez, I don't have a good space where I feel comfortable filming behind me. Uh, if you go on Amazon, and I'm going to give you all this at the end of today, I'm going to give you links to all this. You can get a five foot green screen, just a small one to pop up against behind you. To prove to you what I'm talking about, I'm going to cheat now. And you're all seeing this. This is what it will do if I go buy a video and I go make it virtual. See, it says virtual background. And then I'm going to scroll to where it says none. See, I'm just in front of a green screen. And to show you that it's just a green screen, there's a wall and there's the other wall. Look how tiny that thing is. It's five feet by five feet. That's it. So it's that simple. Now, I can also put myself in front of my own. These are pictures. And what's cool about this is now you can all see this. These are, whoops, let me knock that out. There we go. Uh, these are pictures that I've inserted in here by just hitting this plus sign right there. You can insert pictures and that becomes your background. So these are all parts of my office. And one of them you're going to see me do live from that setting. You're going to see that exact same setup later, but I'm going to do it live instead of green screen. But maybe I, I want a different view, right? I want water in the background. Maybe I want to look like I'm in my living room. I can switch to my living room. So those are little things. I have branded ones that you saw like that. That's all you do for a virtual background. Some of you are going to say, hey, Mike, I heard on Zoom that I don't need a green screen. I can just click, go to virtual background, and it'll erase like I have a green screen. I'm going to highly recommend you don't do that. Because here's what happens when you do that. Like if you move it all, since it's not a real green screen, it's going to get confused by motion, and your hand's going to disappear, and part of your elbow is going to disappear, and they're going to see weird things happening when you move. So either do no green screen or green screen. Don't do a fake virtual is what it's called. So I just advise against that. All right, we're back to showing you behind the scenes here. Uh, so you don't have to look at, each, at yourselves. If you don't want to, I'll go to speaker view if, if that makes it easier instead of gallery view. So that's video. I can invite people in during this session. So now I'm popped up here and these are all people I can just invite. And all I did was go to the invite button right here and it pops this up. Or I can email them. I can copy the URL and paste it in the chat so you could all send it to people. So those are all ways that you can help more people join. We're, so we're up to 41 people in here right now, which is really cool. And Sherry's keeping an eye on that so that she'll let people keep coming in. And then we're going to go to some of these a little bit later, but I want to show everybody chat. You all have the ability to chat right now. So Sherry's going to be able to see the chat for everyone too, just like I would. So if I don't see a question. I, um, she, I have a question. Yep. Am I getting... Are the pictures blocking? I did admit one person, but I, my pictures and everyone on the side that I'm seeing that are in this meeting, is that blocking a box of who's asking to come into the meeting? Um, if it is, you can move, it, that's a good question. Sherry's the co-host. If it's blocking, Sherry, okay. you, can, you can move because it's your own computer, not mine, that's allowing you to do that. So okay. you can click on that box about letting people in. You would go down to manage participants. I see it now. Okay. And you can go move that wherever you want to move it, Sherry. Okay. That was a great okay. question for everybody else to get to experience. Your co-host might be like, hey, I want to see only part of the screen. It keeps popping up in the middle. Like I have this in the middle here. Um, and that I'm going to move over to the side. But that way I can see your questions or if you chat. Here's another cool thing. Now, be careful if don't private chat me during this thing because I'm showing everybody behind the scenes, which means they're going to see a private chat. But you could private chat normally the, the moderator. They could private chat you. So it doesn't have to be to everyone. Over here, you'll notice it says everyone. But if I want to pick somebody to talk, talk to privately right now, I could do that. And you all can do that. So I was on a webinar recently and a friend saw I was on a two and they private chat at me. Hey, Mike, you're in here. This is really cool. And nobody else saw it except the two of us. So that's something cool to keep in mind that people can private chat each other. Now, if you're a teacher, that could also be a concern. You might not want students private chatting. So you might want to see if there's a way you can turn that off as an example.
Just something to keep in mind, but that's a great why. What is the limit of people in a Zoom? All right, so when you sign up for Zoom, in fact, we were, I helped somebody do this after this morning's, uh, there's a free version and a $14.99 a month version. The free version will tell you how many can be in versus the $14.99. So you'll see that if you go to zoom.us and you look at plans and pricing, it'll tell you. Uh, I have what's called the business version and it's so huge, we're never gonna have to worry about those numbers. It's, you know, it's, I think it's 700 to 1,000. It's, it's very, very large. So that makes that easy to do. It might, in fact, ours might even be larger than that. So that's a good question in the chat box. So that's the chat box. If anything goes wrong during this meeting, and I think we need to pause, I've got a pause button and I've got to stop for the recording. All right, that's not going to stop the meeting. We're all going to be here, but it stops the recording. I've set this all up so it automatically records. And I'm going to show you all how to do that at the end when we show you how to set up a meeting. All right, so as soon as it started, it was recording. And then we have what's called breakout rooms. Now, this is one of the coolest feature of a Zoom meeting. And this is really important to understand the difference between a Zoom meeting and I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna stop for a second sharing so we're just looking directly at each other. Uh, the difference in a Zoom meeting and a webinar is that a webinar is really intended for me to just talk to you and not really have a lot of live video discussion between each other where a meeting is great for teaching because all the students can be seen and they can talk. It's really good for coaching. It's good for businesses that want to do an online conversation between each other. As a professional speaker, I'd way rather do a meeting because I want people to, be, I'm interactive. I want people to go, Mike, what about this? What about that? I want to help them with those questions. But if I just wanted to talk for an hour and take their questions from like the chat, a webinar would be the way to go. But we're teaching a meeting right now because a meeting allows us to do breakout rooms. And this is one of the coolest features about the whole concept of what we're gonna do here tonight. And I'm about to show you that. So I'm gonna go back and share my screen so you can see where I'm gonna do that and you can see it yourself. So now on the screen, I will go to annotate just like I did earlier and we'll create a spotlight. Now, some of you might've noticed that Sherry as a co-host, it might've made noise so she came over on the screen. So if a co-host appears to be talking or making noise, they'll take over the screen for a second because it thinks they're trying to talk. So that's no big deal, just good for you to know. All right, at the bottom you see breakout rooms right there, all right? I'm about to send you all into a breakout room and it's gonna divide you up and watch what happens when I push this button. It's going to ask me, hey Mike, how many people do you want? How many rooms do you want? There's 40 participants. Now, I'm going to go into each breakout room separately while you're all in there. So if we go to 10, this is going to take forever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually knock this down to five rooms, eight people in each room. Okay. I'm going to give you like two minutes in there. Uh, you can determine when you set up a meeting how long the breakout room warning is. In other words, if I think mm, I want to end all the breakout rooms, you can set up whether they have 15 seconds to end or 60 seconds to end, or 30 seconds to end. So you can set that up just so you're aware of how that works. So I'm about to hit create breakout rooms. When I do this and I send you to your breakout rooms, I'd like you to do the following. I'd like you to ask each other just quickly, because it's gonna be quick, what you're hoping to use Zoom for. That's it, that's all you gotta do, right? What you're hoping to use Zoom for. So I'm gonna create the breakout rooms. See, there they all are. And as soon as I hit open all, break, all rooms, you're going to be going into them. It's going to send you in there, right? When I decide to close it, it'll give you a warning. It'll say there's maybe 15 seconds left in here. If I want to talk to you while you're in there, there's little options over here. See the options that I just clicked right there? I can set the countdown. I don't like 60 seconds. That's a long time for you to be waiting to close out. I'm going to give you a 15 second warning when I close out the breakout rooms. All right, and I also am allowing you to get out of the breakout at any time. So that's pretty cool. I'm also clicking automatically put you in breakout rooms. Uh, so I'm not choosing who's in them, but you, I could have. When I set this up, I could have made it so you all went to certain breakout rooms. So that, that's one of the cool really things about using a breakout. Here we go. I'm about to send you all to your breakout rooms. Just quickly to unmute yourselves when you're in there and share what you're going to use it for and then we'll come back to me. Okay, so they're all away now in the breakout room. 
And what you're watching me do is I can send them a message. So that's what you're seeing on the screen. I can send a message to all the breakout rooms, not a, a verbal one, but a written one. So you're seeing me just write this out to them, letting them know I can send them a message. So they're learning. And then you're going to hit me see, hit send down here at the bottom. Now, now that I've done that, you're going to see all the breakout rooms. And I just hit join next to the breakout room I want to go into. So see here, I'm clicking join. And I say yes. And then we go to go into that breakout room. Now, the reason we're in blue is because it doesn't let us, it's not allowing us to record what's happening in the breakout room right now. But in the breakout room, when I want to get out, I just go back to that same screen that we saw uh, that showed all those breakout rooms. And I just choose a different breakout room to join. And it'll say, are you sure you want to leave this one and go that one? And I click yes. That's it. And I just move around to the breakout rooms that easily. So it's that simple to do. And then you can anytime click the button that says close breakout rooms. Okay, so here we go. They're all about to jump back in to the main room. So interesting that when I came out of that, it did that to me. Just so you all to know, that's that happened earlier today too. When I came out of the breakout rooms for some reason, it muted me. So good for you to all know that if you're if you do hop back to the main room, it might mute you from that. So that was breakout rooms. They're really cool, right? Those are super cool to be able to work with for a lot of different things you can do with them. All right, so the other thing I can do is, I'm gonna share my screen so I can show you all your controls again. I can decide who can share. So right now, only one person can share a screen at a time. And since I'm sharing mine, nobody else can. But if I clicked right here where it says multiple participants can share, then other people could just hop in and share their screens. So just so you understand how that works. Uh, but there's advanced sharing options where I can say only the host shares. And now none of you have the ability to do that. So somebody can't try to jump in and share while I'm talking live if I don't want them to. So I'm actually going to that because that way somebody doesn't accidentally share a screen on us. Uh, and so now that is done there. And then if we go to more, there are things you can go live to Facebook, which by the way, it would just ask to log into your Facebook account and it would share the whole meeting live on your Facebook profile. And people, then if they're not in the meeting but want to watch, you could tell them, follow me on Facebook at 8 o'clock. And they could watch the whole meeting on Facebook. So that's, or on YouTube. You can see that there is also there too. All right, let's get now to the questions about really running a meeting and how you can do that effectively, how you can do that uh, in a way that's engaging and interactive. I want to show you a couple things you can do, and it has to do with sharing the screen. So I am now going to share my main screen again, like I showed you how to do earlier, but I'll show it one more time. To share a screen, I simply go to new share. And now notice how this all pops up. This morning, we couldn't show you this. So you'll notice there's my main screen right there, right? And then there's a whiteboard and there's an iPhone via AirPlay, an iPhone that you plug in. That's a little fancier stuff. You can play with that if you want. But then there's my text messages, if I wanted to show that for some reason. There's my browser, which we're going to show tonight because we're going to show you how to set up a meeting. And there's my PowerPoint, which is really important because that allows you to use visuals. So we're going to the PowerPoint. Uh, here we go. I'm going to click on the PowerPoint. I'm going to hit share. And I'm going to start. Now, what's interesting here, it's giving what's called presenter's view. If you were ever use PowerPoint. Uh, it's showing us right now the presenters view. So I'm going to switch it so you can watch me do that live. I'm going to show you the tricks of how I did all of that in PowerPoint, but I'm going to first just go play from start. So now you're seeing my PowerPoint, correct? Everybody's seen my PowerPoint? I'll play from start. So no, no, no not seeing it. My, not seeing it. Okay, that's good to know. So yeah. we will go back to share screen. Oh, it stopped. So when I came back, it said it accidentally stopped. Zoom informed that. So that wasn't me. That wasn't anybody doing anything wrong. It's just Zoom had a glitch. It can happen. So I'm going to go back to share screen. I'm going to go click on PowerPoint. Except this time, I'm going to make sure that you can all watch it happen. So I'm going to go share my desktop again. Now you're all seeing the desktop. I'm going to go click share. And now when you see the PowerPoint, notice the slides there. So you're seeing the full PowerPoint because I went and played it and then came back to the screen. So before you start your meeting, play your slideshow in whatever window you have it in. 
here's the key to this. And so I'm going to cheat here for a second. I'm not going to share yet. I want you to see something else first. I want you to see my own screen only because on a Mac, we have different desktops. Can you see my three desktops? Is it showing that? Yes. Okay. So I played PowerPoint on the middle desktop while I'm running everything else on this desktop. Otherwise, if PowerPoint was all in the same place as Zoom, PowerPoint would take over your computer and you couldn't do anything. So that's how you get away with this. Now. I go down and I click share and you see the PowerPoint as a running PowerPoint. Now I'll share it and now you all get PowerPoint, right? Now, PowerPoint's a little funky in that if I try to push the up and down arrows that would normally take you through PowerPoint, they're numb, it won't let you do that. But if you click your mouse, it advances them. So, you've already figured this part out. I talk fast. And this is me just telling you, I talk fast. And in front of a live audience, I ask the same thing. We're going to move quickly just because there's so much to get through. Uh, and some people might go, hey, Mike, do you know how chaotic trying to do this can be with kids? Yeah, I have four sons. And right now in this house, there's six of us because of college is being canceled. <laughs> so I've got four sons. I've got a grandchild. I get the noise. I get all that that can happen. But see, that's a good example of what I can do with PowerPoint. You can show pictures you can give them a presentation. And we can talk about rule number one. I mentioned it when we first started. I said, rule number one is get to your content. So did you notice today, once I handed off Sherry admitting, I have not looked back at who can try to get in. I'm not doing any of that because I wanted to give you how to. If you do a Zoom meeting and people are coming to learn something and you take three to five minutes to get to any content, they will be gone you'll see 20 people go to three, and I'm not exaggerating. If you give them content or you give them what they're coming for, the fun, whatever it is, they stick around. So it makes a huge, huge difference in getting to that, right? So get to it, honor their time, get to the point. How do we engage and use interaction? Now, what I'm about to teach is something I learned from my good friend, Jessica Pettit, brilliant speaker on diversity. She's a really amazing human being. And I'm about to show you, this is a great example. Everybody watching right now, please do this. Please get a piece of paper and pen. If that takes you 10 seconds to do it, that's okay. Go ahead and get a piece of paper and pen. And with that paper and pen, I would like you to quickly write down a question that you have right now about maybe a way you want to use this that you haven't figured out yet. Or, hey, Mike, what about this? What about that? I just want you to write that down on the paper and pen. Paper and pen. Right? You don't have to have the coffee like in the picture. You don't need the little berries back there. You just need a paper and pen. That's it. Right? That, what you just did right there, is interaction. Because when you ask people to get a paper and pen, they are now engaging and must be paying attention. If they, Otherwise, they could be checking their email. They could be on their phones. But when you say, hey, grab a paper and pen and write this down, it makes people take action and stop whatever it could be potentially diverting them away from what you're saying. So it's a simple little technique that Jessica taught that's brilliant. Just use a simple paper and pen for that. All right, so another thing that you can do for interaction, I'm gonna share screens for this, and Jessica does this too, so I wanna give her full credit for this. We're gonna go back to that PowerPoint, is text me, right? You can see my number up there. Now, that's not my phone number. So, like, there are people on this that know my phone number. They're like, that's not your phone number. That's a Google Voice number that's free, completely free. 414-810-2811 is my Google Voice number. So, that would go to my phone, in theory, and then I could open up my phone and see your questions popping in so I could answer that way. So, maybe you got somebody that's not comfortable or they, they want to stay on their phone, but they want to text you. All right, go into Google Voice right? Simple, simple way that you can do that. I'm going to test and see if any of you text it actually. So I'm going to go in here to test it real quickly in messaging. And let's see if anybody did. All right. So this morning, some people did actually, like Sherry uh, texted this morning, but we actually have one from this morning still in here. All right. I'm going to reset it, see if anybody did there. Simple little technique. All right. Super, super easy. So anything you can do that makes the audience take action that doesn't involve the screen in front of them makes them re-engage in a different way outside of the screen. And that's really healthy to do. So that's a super simple thing you can do. 
let's go back to PowerPoint because PowerPoint's got a few questions some of you asked. All right, send your guest away. We already did that. We're not sending you to prison. It was to fund breakout rooms. We're already there. All right, so the question before move, went a little fast. So we will try to, there we go. We will go, how do I set up? So the question there was, how do I set everything up here? Uh, I am going to show you what I use here in a second. And we already talked about the webcam, where it should be placed. But I'm going to show you a picture of equipment in a moment. How do I ensure a strong connection with my Wi-Fi? I'm going to show you exactly that because I'm doing that right now. For I'm going to explain why in a moment. This, a cable. You want to plug into your computer directly if you can from your router. So your routers have the ability to take a cord that looks like this. It's called an Ethernet cord. And it allows you to plug from the router to your computer. You might need to buy a really long one depending on your house. I'm using a 100-foot one because of where my office is. But here's why this is important. There are six people on the internet right now in my home. And if I wasn't direct in, the speed could drop off dramatically on a Wi-Fi connection and we could be in trouble. And you, people could struggle to hear you. And if you've ever been on anything online when there's a weak connection, it's very annoying to people. So you want to connect directly in. Now, some of you might be saying, but Mike, my computer does not have a direct connection. That's right. So whatever your computer is, you'd go on Amazon, you look at what you have for net connections. Is it USB? Is it mini wire fire? You'd want to look at what you have and look at one that goes Ethernet to, and you name that in Amazon, and you'll find an adapter for $10 to $20. And it'll allow you to directly go into your computer. So going direct is really, really a smart thing to do. Uh, looked like there was a chat there, so let me see if I can answer that chat real quick. Uh, in the meantime, oh, looks like that chat went away. All right, so that's a direct quet, uh, <laughs> direct connect. What equipment you should use? I'm going to give you an entire list of that at the end. So you're going to have all of that to know what equipment to use, all right, to make your lives way, way easier. It's not this. That was ancient video, but there are cameras you can use that people really, really love. They typically cost anywhere from $90 to $200 for the ones that I'm going to give you links to that are really good. Uh, there are ones that are $700. So the $90 one on there will do more than enough for what you want. This is exactly what I use. So I have a microphone on an arm, and you're going to notice down here, let me annotate to make this easier for everybody to watch. Uh, so the annotation is right there. There we go. And I'm going to just make it so my spotlight's on. Right there, that's a clamp. Clamps to any table, any desk. So wherever you want to set this up with your computer, you just clamp this on and you got all this working in front of you. Now to prove it, I'm going to now go live and there's my arm. There's the exact arm you just saw in that picture. And all I do is scoop it below me while I'm talking so you're not staring at the arm the whole time. But it can go all the way over here, it can go all the way over here. I can go way, way back and it can go way back. So, and I think that whole setup the, uh, the arm and all by itself was like 20 bucks, but that also include the microphone. This microphone, which is a really good one, I think you're going to notice on there it was $89. The other microphones in this kind of world, 150 to 200 So I'm trying to, even though this sounds expensive, I'm trying to give you the lowest of the good quality is what I'm trying to do there with any of the equipment just to make your lives easier. I do my podcasting on this. I do everything on it. The sound is fantastic. I do radio interviews using this. So it's really, really good that way. All right, so let's go back and answer the last few questions on the PowerPoint. And here we go. All right, so this is how I would use PowerPoint if I was on stage doing a corporate program. This is one of my actual slides. This is a great thing. I can now do virtual training for companies and it doesn't change how I use graphics, how I use images. It's all right there. So it's super easy for me to be able to use. Ooh, time for prizes. Not yet. That's coming a little bit later. So I'm going to stop this share because we're actually not going to do prizes at this point. We're going to do that at the end. Uh, right now, I want to show you a couple of other things we can do for you here. One of them is I gave you the whole green screen conversation earlier. But you might be sitting here right now going, Mike, uh, are there other options? Because it seems, Mike, you're sitting and I want to do this standing. And by the way, if I was doing a paid presentation by a client and I was being interactive like I normally am, 
I'm not doing it this way. I'm doing it over on a wall in my office. I'm going to take you all to right now. So we're going to pull back the curtain. Yep. Can you tell everyone, everyone, like I posted this in a coach's forum. So not everyone knows what you do. So maybe if you could kind of just start because, you know, those prizes popped up and people are not going to understand what those are about either. I thought about that after this morning. So if you can just briefly say what you do for a living so everyone understands when the prices pop up at the end, what they are referring to and what they involve. Okay, sure. Uh, you mean the prices of the equipment? No, prizes. Your prizes are all oh, about- Oh, prizes. I'm sorry. Living. Okay, this. Sorry, sorry. So sorry. that just popped up. Yeah, we're going to be giving away prizes. Yes, thanks, Sherry. I will answer about, that. Mike. Yeah, what you I'm sorry. About. I thought you said prices. I understand. No, sorry. Uh, so some of you heard this at the very beginning who were in early, and I was making time by sharing what I do, but a lot of people, Sherry just pointed out, weren't in at that point. So I'm about to go show you how to do a full room setup, and then we'll come back and give away the prizes. So I'm going to explain what I do and why the prizes. I speak for a living in middle schools, high schools, universities, military installations, and for parenting groups and for corporations. My program is focused on creating a culture of respect. When I'm in middle schools, high schools, universities, and military, that I'm often brought in to reduce sexual violence by teaching healthy boundaries, healthy sexual decision-making, consent, intervention, respecting boundaries. We discuss sex denudes. All of that's in there. When I'm talking to companies, that's a very different discussion. There I'm talking about how to create a culture of respect in your everyday work. So my work really varies. The prizes you're going to see are going to make sense with the first three groups I talked about. So you're going to see a book of survivors sharing their stories in those prizes. Well, I don't want to give those away, but you're going to see a how-to book for teenagers and parents. You're going to see some clothing that's fun. You're going to see DVD. So that's why Sherry was asking me to give you a hint, heads up of what I do. So when you see those prizes, that makes sense. Right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you across my office. You're going to see the mess. You're going to see the behind the scenes, not all the covered up here, nice looking. And I'm going to show you another way to do this whole thing. It's going to be very quick because it's so simple to do. Uh, we're going to leave the green screen. So I'm going to now disconnect my mic. You're going to hear me through the computer. It's not going to sound as good. I'll just warn you of that right now. Uh, uh, power. Now, here's the huge risk I'm taking, that this morning we didn't take this risk because I wasn't plugged into the Wi-Fi directly this morning. And I am now, which means I have a cable I have to try to keep connected to this computer while I try to walk and talk. And I in no way can let that weaken, that connection. So here we go. We're hiding, we're stepping behind my cameras and I'm gonna cheat and show you quickly. That's where I'm about to go. And there's, there's lights there, like TV little lights. There's one light on the ground. There's a light up there in the sky. There's a light over there, right? So there's some lights. And what I did, is this is how basic this thing is, super basic. There's a ladder. You can barely see it because of how dark it is, but there's a ladder right there. And I'm about to put my computer on that ladder. So I'll give you a better view of the ladder where it's brighter. There's the ladder. I'm going to stand in front of that ladder and do this presentation. So first I gotta fit my computer inside the step of the ladder without breaking my computer or this cord coming apart. And yay, I did it. Okay, so uh, right now my computer is sitting on a ladder, right? And I'm gonna get that black part out of the screen. Now look, now I can talk live and there's no green screen. And I wanna show you how small this area is because some people are thinking, I don't have a big area to do video. Uh, I can't even put my arms out. So to give you an example, my, I can't go this far. I don't, I don't have four feet to work with, five feet, but it looks like I have a whole wall. There's a couple things that a couple of my friends taught me over the past few days. I'm in a corner, but because I put the screen in a way that you see the yellow going into the blue, until I told you I was in a corner, it can look like that's a long wall going from yellow to blue. So it looks like there's more room here than there actually is. So that's a simple little thing if you have a corner, just try to um, make that work that way. And now I can turn here and talk and I can go here. I can be really interactive. I can hold a book up. I can do all this stuff and there's no green screen. I just made sure that I had enough lighting around me. Now you saw, I quickly gave you an example of some lights that I had around me. Uh, I use, I've been doing video for years for YouTube and all, and you might not have any of that. So then just think, where's a really well lit spot in my house? It will be very different at night than it will be during the day. So during the day, this was actually a hotter sort of set. 
than it was now. It was easier to do at night because there's less light coming in to, just, to cause problems for the computer. Just something to keep in mind. Uh, when I have all this light aimed at me, it's the only light so I can control it. But it, so if you're thinking, ooh, and at night I don't have those lights in my cast, you might want to film more during the day, do this during the day when you have a lot of natural sunlight. So that could help light up that space. But look what I can do. Another thing that a friend taught me, if you're gonna do full body like this, now I know it's not full body, it stops around the belt. Always have your hands in view, always. Because the mind subconsciously thinks, if we can see in a safe open hand, that we're safe with that human being, right? So if they cannot see your hands, they're going, what are they doing with their hands, right? And I know some people are gonna go, whoa, that sounds a little weird and twisted. People are weird and twisted. So you want to make sure that your hands are where they can see it so they're not thinking weird things that distract them, right? So I purposely, when I do training standing, I have my elbows below my hands so my hands don't go down. They stay up at all times this way. By just dropping my elbows, it forces my hands up. So it's a little simple thing you can do if you're going to do standing programs to help them out. By the way, a day ago, this wasn't there, all right? And the plant wasn't there. Now, that light on the plant's a little too bright right now. I would change that after this. But by adding a plant and by having a picture, you warm your setting. People don't want to look at a totally blank wall with you in front of it. It just comes off as too cold. So uh, here's a good example. During the day, the plant didn't look like that because there's natural sunlight hitting it. Right now, only the hot light is hitting it, so it's bouncing off it. All right, we are going to go back to the desk. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow you to ask questions at this point. If anybody has questions with this setup, because it's a little bit different. So I'm going to go to gallery view. Uh, we still have 18 of you on here, which is awesome. Does, if anybody wants to unmute real quick and ask a question, you can. And before I go back to the desk, we're going to give, I'm going to show you before I give away prizes, how to do set up a meeting, by the way, that's still coming up, which is really, really important to know how to do. And we learned some things today that allowed me to show you the behind the scenes because of what I learned. I'm going to show you all of that today. Uh, in tonight's that I couldn't show you this morning. Uh, so does anybody have a question? If you do, unmute. If you don't, I'm going to take that computer and go back to my desk. Is the green screen that you're talking about an actual physical thing, or is this like a program? Uh, green screen. I'm going to take my computer back to this so you can see. Okay. I'm now gonna, it's an actual five foot by five foot piece of material that has, that has enough around it that allows me to lean it against something and it stands. There, there are two kinds of green screens. I'm glad you're asking that, Paula. There's one that's like 10 feet by 12 or six by nine, and you're buying the cloth. And then you have to make sure you put that against something with no wrinkles, with nothing. Or you can buy one that pops up like a tent. And I use a pop-up one behind my desk. And that's the one that's five feet. And it's, I don't ever pop it down because then it could wrinkle again. So it just always stays up and we lean it against the wall when I'm not using it. So that's a great, great question, Paul. So I'm gonna show you that again. I sort of showed it quickly earlier, but it was really quick and probably hard to figure out because it's moving too fast. There is the actual green screen. So let me go to speaker view, there it is. Now you don't see it as green because I have, um, it has my virtual background on, right? So if I go cut that off, you're gonna see it. Let me go cut that off. Boom, there's the green screen. All right, so that's all it is. And if you think, Mike, is it really? Yeah, it's that light. I can move it around like that. All right, and then I can slide it back. And I just have a little thing that I can hang it on down on the ground there. You could use whatever you want. I just used, you could use a chair to set it up against. So awesome question, Paul. Thank you for asking that. Uh, we will now go back to my desk. And I'm going to also plug back into, see how I need to adjust now because the green screen I moved. I need to put my microphone back on for all of you. And back in just so we don't run out of that. And I am now on this mic. By the way, did you all notice the sound difference that just took place? You should have. If you did, just put a thumbs up. Huge difference. That's the difference in a mic and no mic. So there's a lot of value in a mic. Oh, by the way, here's that same wall. But now I appear to be sitting in front of it because it's just a virtual background. That's one of my pictures that I was showing you earlier today how to do, uh, but I'll go back to this one just to keep it consistent with what we did earlier. Uh, so that does, Paula, does that answer your questions on the green screen?
Oh, yes, well, thank you. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Very cool. And my picture, my my picture that I'm I'm sitting in my bedroom is from the import this morning to make a background picture. Yeah. So that's a good example. It looks like I'm Sherry is sitting on her room. couch right now. And with all her kids who could walk into that room if she was, uh, they could all be walking that room, but that's a fake setup. She's actually in behind. She's using the, the green screen. Is I notice when I move, it's, it does like create. You, you yes. The, Thank you, Sherry. So that's a difference in Sherry doesn't have a green screen. She used zoom's feature that allows to, to replace whatever your background is. And by putting a picture in there without a green screen, that's what zoom does. But that, what Sherry just did right so there is it. My hands, you see static or like there's lines around my fingers and stuff. Yeah. By and that's that. why if you, if somebody's going to do this regularly, the $15 for a pop-up green screen is worth it. Cause what, notice the difference in me moving on my green screen and what happened with Sherry. You don't get the space effects. You don't get any of that. I will tell you this though. If I use a busy background picture instead of the one I have, that will be worse. So if Sherry was using my white background, there might be less of that for her. The okay. busier the picture is behind you, the more it struggles to figure out the picture and the real what's happening behind you. Okay. I, I learned that because I had some busy backgrounds. So I've gone to really clean, simple as much as possible. So thank you, Sherry, for bringing that up. That is a great one. Can you do Zoom through your phone? You absolutely can do this through your phone. Zoom has an app, it's free. So if you have a Zoom account, you can do this through your phone. In fact, I was getting ready tonight and I have a secondary account on my phone. Here's why this is, could be brilliant for a lot of you that I was logging in as a secondary person attending. So I could have had my phone right here and seen all the admits pop up on my phone as my phone being the co-host. But that would have been still me distracted versus Sherry helping out and co-hosting and she's letting everybody in. But yeah, you can absolutely use your phone to do all of this uh, a phone's a very high-end camera. It, it's so high-end that sometimes it struggles with a green screen because if the green screen isn't perfect, it sees all the colors and it makes it even harder because it's a higher quality camera than my computer one. So little things you have to think about potentially, but you can absolutely do this with your phone. Awesome, awesome question. So I appreciate you asking that. Uh, a speaker asked me, hey, Mike, do you, are you using NSA Zoom? So for the speakers on right now or watching this on video, the National Speakers Association, which a lot of us are members of, allows you to get a membership, a business membership that might normally cost like $3,000 for $360 a year. So yes, I'm using NSA's business one in, uh, through the membership. Absolutely, that's what I do. And it's awesome. So for those that are speakers, that's a, a small niche that are watching this, but just for them to know. All right, I told you I was going to teach you how to set this whole thing up. So before I go there, any questions before I take you to that screen and how to set everything up for the get-go? Yeah, I have a question, Mike. I'm wondering about teaching uh, something like Tai Chi with, with this venue. Is this a possible thing? I, awesome. I, don't, I would need lots of space and I would need to, yeah, I don't know. I'm not quite sure what you've Here's the good me. thing about teaching Tai Chi, which by the way, She's an amazing tai chi, tai chi instructor. I don't live in Milwaukee anymore, but when I did, I loved going to the few classes I got to go to. Uh, Patricia's just fantastic. Uh, Patricia, the thing about Tai Chi is if somebody's joining you for a virtual and you tell them you're going to be coming from my home, they're not expecting some TV studio for you to be in. So right. the fact that it's going to be homey, as long as they can see you, you're going to be great. So I was, when I went over there to the wall, and I stood with the ladder from my computer to the wall behind me was only four to five feet. So if, if I had put that at the end of the room, we could have filmed 14 feet of space to uh, everybody to have been able to watch you move as an example for Tai Chi or for somebody then, doing yoga. But then to hear me that they'd have to, I'd have to have a mic on my ears. You would. And I actually provide links. There are a couple things you can do for that. You can wear what's called a lavalier microphone that Amazon has tons of them. You just put lapel, lapel microphone uh, for like, if you're doing this on your phone, you'd put lapel microphone for the phone, or you can even put wireless uh, microphone for computer or wireless microphone for iPhone, whatever your phone is. And you can find actual microphones that you can wear now wireless. So if you're doing Tai Chi or yoga, you can do that. Uh, there, there's some great ones out there nowadays that allow you to do that. 
um, I can't believe I'm forgetting the name of it. I, I own the one uh, that speakers will use sometimes. I'm just spacing out. But, but there are ones like that that you could do. So that's a great question. And yes, you can absolutely do this for things like yoga. I know a local business that talked to me today after being on this morning's about doing yoga using this for their business. Okay. So it, it is absolutely possible. Yep. It'd just be a matter of, are you okay with the sound quality if you're not get a microphone to, to solve that? Because you all heard the difference in when I was on mic and not on mic. There, there is a big difference. It's a big difference. It's a yeah. big difference. Correct. And I'm also in a huge room. Like this is a high ceiling room. It's not a big wide long room, but it's a high ceiling room, which is worse. The bigger the ceiling, the worse sound because it's going to bounce. So that's just important to know. All right. We are going to move to how to set up a meeting. Uh, and what I'm going to do here is actually I'm going to start by sharing my screen. And we are going to go to preferences. First of all, I want to show you all of this in Zoom. So I just went to my Zoom and my preferences. I'm starting with audio. I'm listening to you all just through my speakers. I don't have earbuds on. Uh, I am using my professional microphone. If I went to this one, watch the difference. This is the computer. You're mute. All right, now you hear me, but you're hearing me. Um, does it sound different than if I go like this and now you're hearing me? Yes. All right. So the difference was one was a computer mic, one was this mic. So, so Mike, you want to make sure it's a wireless using, mic. If you what's got that? a wireless, if you got a wireless mic like you just discussed. Yep. Where would where, where would that option? Show right up? here. So when I go to audio and it says microphone, you click there and you choose which microphone you're going to use. So, so you'd if have you to plug, have your micro, sorry, you'd have yeah, to have if, your microphone phone set up wirelessly first before you go into Zoom. That's correct. That's what you would do. You'd set it up to your computer. So if I was using one of those, what I would do is I would come in here before the session. This is just preferences. You can do this at any time. You don't even need to be in a meeting to set these up. All right. And so I would go in here and I would choose it so that it's always there when I turn it on. All right. If it's on, it's choosing it. All right. So that's, that's all I do there. And that said, use separate audio device to play a ringtone. That's like if somebody beeps to come in the meeting, uh, you get a ringtone so you can hear that. Mute microphone when joining a meeting. Well, if I'm the host, I don't want to mute. But if I'm not the host, I do. So that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, let's also look at video now. I'm enabling HD. So you see enable HD. Let me go to my spotlight again. So you see enable HD. I am not mirroring my video. Watch what happens if I mirror my video. I see the opposite of you, and I find that very annoying. So I don't want to look at the opposite. I want to see what you're seeing, which is that. So I don't mirror my video. Touch up my appearance. Well, I could use help there. So I'm going to click that. A lot of people actually like that. You might notice that my camera doesn't say FaceTime. It says eyeglasses. Eyeglasses is an app you can use. Uh, that will take over your camera and watch this. I can adjust. This is eyeglasses. I can adjust the brightness. So I'm brighter. I can make it darker. So I can adjust. Even if the room's not bright, I can make it brighter. All right. I can make the temperature warmer. So I can make it look much, much different based on, and that's a really simple app called eyeglasses. And it uses your computer microphone or your webcam. It'll do it to your webcam too if you're to buy a webcam. You, when you install, it'll let you tell that, right? So that's a simple little thing that I use. Down here, always display participant names on their videos. I like that. That way, when you talk, I can see who you are. There are people on this webcam I've never met. So if I can see your name, that's very, very helpful. Uh, turn off my video when joining a meeting. I do have this, just in case I accidentally come into a meeting and I don't mean to be in a meeting and I don't want anybody to see whatever's going on, like I'm not dressed for that. Uh, I have that. Always show preview. So you can just choose how you do this. Uh, always spotlight my video when speaking so I can see that. And then I can display up to 49 of you at once. I can display in the gallery view. So that is all just video. General, this was a big issue th today. This morning I did a session and I was trying to show everybody what I was doing behind this, the thing and I couldn't and here's why. This is if somebody's doing dual monitors, you would click that so you have two monitors. This is if you want to be full screen. Some of you like that. Some of you won't. These are just personal choices. This one is scale to fit, which I like. 
This was the big one. Show Zoom windows during screen share. If you're trying to teach someone how to do something in Zoom and you want to show them the behind the scenes like I am today, that's essential. Otherwise, when you go to share screen and you choose your screen, it won't show Zoom. It'll show everything except Zoom. And this morning, I couldn't show everybody all, everything I was doing because it wouldn't show Zoom. That little button solves that, all right? Copy, invitation, you are also, these are all pretty simple to see. Uh, you can give yourself a little reminder. All of that's there. How do you want to see your chat while you're sitting there? Your virtual background, you want to add new ones, go add a picture and add a new one. How you want to record. So this is where mine get recorded to on my computer. I have mine set. I do not like a timestamp on mine. I don't like that because then when I share it to you all later, you're all looking at a timestamp. I don't like that. So those are choices I made. Here's more advanced ones that's going to take us to the website. So I'm going to do that in a minute anyways. Any questions? That's all your preferences. Mm -hmm. I went up here to Zoom and clicked preferences. And that's how you saw all of that. So it's nice and simple. All right, let's show you how to do a meeting. By the way, we're moving really smoothly because we knew how to do some stuff today we couldn't do this morning. So we're moving much faster uh, than it went this morning. So I am now going to share screen. I'm going to take you inside of um, inside actual zoom.us. And zoom.us is where you would have a subscription, where you'd have a membership. We're in mine right now. All right. So let me just go to my main account. Let's just go to Zoom. All right. Now I click my account. Let's give you a spotlight. It's always nicer. I click my account and whoops, good old Apple. There we go. And I am over here. I got meetings, webinars, recordings, uh, and I am going to create a meeting, not a webinar. We talked about that earlier today. I'm going to create a meeting. There's the current meeting going on right there, but I'm going to schedule a new one. And I'm going to make one as if I've never made one before. So if you're watching this, I'm not cheating. So this is going to say test. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go test meeting. I haven't been using my keyboard, so it just took a second. Test meeting. If you have people joining you, you want to type in there what so they can, uh, they can see that. All right, so let me go there. Uh, you can type in um, showing how to use, showing how to use Zoom. Okay, and then it'll allow you to select a template. See, I have templates. Test meeting for Zoom class. We're not going to do that because you don't have a template. We'll show you how to have a template at the end here. But right now, you don't have one. So we're going to keep going. We're going to make it for tonight. We're actually not actually doing this. So we're a fake one for 11 p.m. Central Time, the last one hour. If you go over an hour, it does not matter because we're going, we're at the hour mark right now, and we don't have much left now, but it's going to be fine. Keep going. But I'm just making it, setting it up for an hour. Uh, your time zone. If you want to make it a recurring meeting, if you're a teacher, a yoga, a Tai Chi instructor, this is huge. If you want to say every Wednesday, click on this link and join me, you click on recurring. If it's daily, you make it every day. If it's weekly, you could choose what day of the week, see Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So I could choose how many weeks I want to run it for. Maybe I want to run it for 10 weeks. Uh, I could end it by a date or those 10. So that's super cool, all right? So then you don't have to keep redoing this. It's set up for good. So recurring is really, really neat. Registration, you don't have to require it. I do. I want to know who's coming to join me. Uh, and I, if somebody, I find that if you have people register, you don't get people also messing around as much, like coming in and not taking it seriously. So required can help. But if you're just like, I just want everybody to join, you don't need to do that. Uh, and then requiring a meeting password. None of you had a password to get in today. I didn't make you do that. Some people will do that. And here's a good reason to do that. I want a really private conversation. And I don't want any chance of somebody coming in there that I don't want in there. Then I'm going to require a password and get every password. So if I go require a password, it gives me a password or I can type in one. So you can make up your own password. Now, who I allow to be on video is my choice. I'm on video and all of you have the chance to be on video. But if I go off, you're not on video, all right? Audio, you always want both. You want to be able to join via phone or computer. That way people can listen if they can't see. Sometimes they just don't have a good enough reception or Wi-Fi so they, they have to be on the reception of their phone. 
Uh, meeting options. You want to let them join before you. So if they get there and you're not there, they don't leave. You want to mute them upon entry so they're not all talking all at once, 50 people. That, that could be very messy. You want to enable the waiting room because that, that allows them to have a place to wait if they show up before you. And then this is a cool thing where if I wanted to create breakout rooms before the meeting and assign people to it. So as a teacher, and I want to make sure these four students are in this breakout room, these four are in that, I can do that there. I didn't do that tonight because we just let you break up automatically. You saw how it did that. I have all my meetings record automatically in the cloud for me. That way, if something goes wrong on my computer, Zoom still has it. So I always save up in the cloud. And I'm going to show you those in a second from today's earlier session. Alternate host. This is a higher end. You're going to pay more for that. You'd have to have multiple host accounts on your account. That's more expensive. So you're going to ignore that. Then you're going to hit save. Now, when you hit save, you're going to see all of this. All this, you can add it to Google Calendar, Outlook Calendar. But here's the cool part. There's the link everybody needs to join you. So you can go copy invitation. It'll pop up and show this entire thing you can copy. So that's super cool. You can just hit copy all that and paste it onto Facebook or an email and send it to people. So it's that simple on how to get people to your meeting. Uh, this is if you want to change these things, you'd go edit this meeting. If you wanted to make changes to what we made earlier, we don't really want to make changes, so we're just going to cancel that. But here's a cool thing you could do. You could go down here and see where it says save as a meeting template. Now that you've done it, you might not want to keep redoing all those same questions every time you do a meeting. So you click save as a meeting template. Now I've done two of these today. So this is test meeting two template. I'll save it as a template. Next time when I want to start a meeting, I'll use that template. All right, here's another cool thing I haven't shown you yet tonight. I have them ready for you, but I haven't shown them. You can create polls. And you can use these polls during your session to ask people questions. Right, my, so I'm, let me make my screens not do that. It's acting really large right now, so we're going to try to shrink it down. Uh, and you can ask questions, single file, all of that. So super easy to do. I'm going to show you one of those in a little bit. All right, there we go. So you can add polls, and I'm going to show you a poll in a moment. All right, but uh, now let's show you why having a template is fantastic to do. Let's go back and start a new meeting. Schedule a new meeting. This time, you're going to name it but you're gonna go select template. I'm gonna hit the one we just created and everything's done. And now you just hit save and you have a new meeting. Done, that fast. Now, some of you are going, all right, Mike, once I do all of this, how do I get access to everything I just did in that meeting? Well, over here, we have meetings and webinars. This is a meeting, recordings. So there's your recordings. This is my recordings from forever. So right now, our current session is recording. So it says processing recording. But there's this morning's. This is really cool to see. Watch this. I click on it. And now you can watch this, the speaker view. This is the video of this morning. So I could click on the speaker. I could speak. Actually, that's a practice one. Let me go to a different one. Whoops. I did another there's practice. Two minutes. So let me show you the one from actually today by just going back screen on my screen here. and. Learning with Mike is what we actually want from this morning. Those are a bunch of practice ones I did since then. There it is. So that's this morning's. Now look at all those recordings. This is super cool. Let me show you what those are. This is the video of, t of this morning's session with me. And it's only my view. So if we were going to play that. So you want to go back now. I want to give people access to watch this morning's video. They can now watch this morning's video. They can also see the chat, my transcription on the right. They can read the video. So that's really, really cool to be able to do. Now, that is shared screen with speaker view. If I want to show them everybody's video with the shared screen, I'd use that view. If I want to just use the chat file and see what everybody was talking about during it, I can click on the chat file and download that. It'll be a text file to my computer. So that's what's really cool about all of that. Uh, if you want to download all these files, there's a button to do it. If you want to just give people a link to watch the video again, you click that right there, and it just saved it, and I could go paste it wherever I want. But each of these has its own little link right there that I can save, or I can throw it to the garbage. Each of them has that. 
So keep in mind, you are sharing a link from your Zoom. What I do is I download the video. I put it on Vimeo, another video service, so I can put it on my own website. That's just because this is, I do this for a living. You don't need to do that. If you're okay with everybody jumping in and be able to see that link, just use that link. This is what they're going to actually see if they go to that link, the screen right here. So that's what's really cool about Zoom, your ability to use it after you're done with it or for you to learn by going back and watching what happened, or you wanna remember what somebody said, you have all of that available to you. All right, so that's setting up a meeting. Let me go back to my screen. Any questions right now for everybody? Any questions at all? If you do, unmute, because I'm about to show you another feature here that we didn't get to yet, I said I was gonna to get to, and that is polling. Yeah, Mike, it's Raven. Hi, Raven. Hi, I had a quick question about um, the actual, ah, I think my mind is going blank. Dang it, I forgot my question. That's okay. If it, <laughs> and look, it happens to all of us. Uh, so if it pops back into your mind, just interrupt me. I'm cool okay. with that. Uh, I, I do it all the time. So uh, we're, we're good with that. If it comes back, let me know. While we're waiting on that, I'm going to show you, I'm going to go back to a screen share, and I'm going to show you polling. So polling is right there. Now, I've already created polls for all of you to participate in before the, uh, the meeting. And by the way, that is the ideal way to do it. I did find out you could make them during the meeting, which we tried to do earlier and we struggled with. Uh, I figured out how, but it's not friendly. So I would make any polls you're going to do beforehand and watch what happens if you make several polls. And I showed you earlier where to do that. You already saw that back on the website when you set up the meeting. When you click on poll, and it says poll one right here, you should be able to, now let's see if it behaves. Uh, you should be able to, nope, it's not behaving. So if I, we're gonna leave that screen, and we're gonna go back to my screen. You're not seeing that anyways. I'm gonna go launch poll. Now you all see the poll on your computer. Do you all see the poll on your computer? Yes. Yeah, we see, right. the, we see the results, I think, Mike, is what we're looking at. Um, nope, you're not. People are just answering, and it's showing it to oh, you this time. Mine's yep. covered. Okay. That's you maybe, Sherry, you're a co-host, uh, so that uh, could be part of it. it. Oh, okay. Yeah, because you're a co-host, that could be the case. Okay. Um, but everybody else is popping in there, so we've already, 19 of you have already answered. Most of you found out about this from a family, friend, or colleague. That's super cool, by the way, because that means you didn't even know about us, and we're able to, to share, which we love. So if I now, now you're all taking it. When I end the poll, I just hit end poll. When I do that, it's going to let me choose whether to share the results with you or not. That could be important, because if you're a teacher, you might not want people to see certain answers, for some reason, I don't know, but you might not want, I'm gonna share. So now I'm hitting share results. You all now should be seeing the shared results. If you're seeing the shared results, if you could, just put a thumbs up for me and I'll know you're seeing the shared results. Cool, so you're seeing the shared results. So now I'm going to end that poll, all right? We're done with that poll. Now what's interesting about this is, uh, we said earlier, the, the one thing about polling is, if you do more than one, it can be a little more complicated. And that you might noticing, it is struggling with letting us go to the next poll. All right, uh, let's see if we can get it to behave here on our Mac. Poll closed. All right, let's see if we can get to, yeah, so it's not showing the other poll to us, unfortunately. So that's a bummer. Uh, if I wanted to make a new poll, you hit this edit button, it goes back to the website and makes you do it all in the website. So that's polling. So you can choose one poll you wanna do, or maybe you'll practice more and figure out how to do more than one poll, uh, and you'll have that figured out, which could be very cool. All right, now we have given you the A to Z of everything that we know how to share. So do you have questions before I go back and start giving away some prizes? Because we have some prizes to give away at this point. So does anybody? Yes, Paula. Uh, I was wondering now, once you get your meeting all set up, and you're ready to, you know, have your meeting with someone, does it just, do we just show up like we did initially? You do. Yeah. I didn't do anything differently than you did. Okay. Yep. I can, I can do it by, there's a couple ways I could do it. I could do it by clicking the link myself and going in because Zoom's going to know it's me. We're coming from, it's going to see me logged in. It's going to know it's me. 
but what I do is I just open up Zoom on my, my own app. It knows your own meetings. So what will happen is it'll say start a new meeting or join, and it will show your meeting there. So like when I came in, it was showing a two-minute countdown to the meeting. And it said, start that meeting, join that meeting, and I joined that meeting. If I went into somebody else's, it wouldn't give me any of those options. It would just show theirs. That would be it. So that is a clarifier that's important, Paul. I'm glad you asked that. You should see your actual meeting already in your Zoom app when you go in. If you're logged in under your account, it'll recognize it's you and show you your meeting. So you'll, you'll have options there. So awesome question. Now, if some of you are thinking, Mike, I don't want the prizes. Should I hop out now? No, because actually what I'm going to teach with the prizes is really cool end of meeting surveys that you can use with the people on your actual Zoom meeting to get information when you're done. That is really helpful. And this is how you're all going to get the free giveaways. So I Mike, have free giveaways everybody's getting, which includes the link to all the equipment that we use. Mike, so you're getting all Alan of that. Anderson. Mike? Y yes. This is Alan Anderson. Hi. Hi, Alan. Hey, uh, quick question. So when people sign up and you're the host for a meeting, um, once, when they sign up, are they automatically in the situation where whenever they speak, then their face comes up on the screen? Is that automatic or is that part of the preferences? So I can, yeah, I can set up the preferences that the speaker, you might've remembered back when I was showing settings, it said highlight the speaker or, or just you, you can choose which way. Uh, in my screen, personally, I can go to gallery view like that where I'm looking at everybody, uh, or I can go to speaker view and go to that. But you all probably can do that too. You should be able to choose whether you want to see everybody or just me. So you're able to do that also potentially. So it's very similar that way. But I could be muted and I could have it so that my video doesn't start. You might remember I have all that in preferences I showed. You can choose whether your video starts when you come in, whether your sound starts when you come in. So you can determine all of that beforehand. Oh, by the way, uh, guys like me that have lots of a uh, skull that likes to show up. Yeah, I use something. Otherwise, you'd be getting glared out. And somebody going, there's a bright now. It's not nearly as bright. My friend taught me this a long time ago. It's called Peter Thomas Roth, Max Anti-Shine. And some of you are thinking, well, Mike, I don't have that issue. But if you do for your nose even, you'd be amazed how shinier this is before I came on today and just spreading. It's clear gel. It's not even powder. And it's clear gel. And it eliminates the shine. It's amazing the difference. So, I mean, compared to what it was before. So it's, I know like my sister's laughing right now. I can see her. But uh, for some of <laughs> well, you. We all have that family nose too. You yes, know? exactly. So, I mean. Yeah. And that point right there, I didn't get a good job of right there. So, uh, but those are the kind of things you would notice. So that's a side note. Let's get you to the prizes. By the way, you can still ask me questions as we're going through here. So I'm now going to go back to the PowerPoint. That's how we're going to do this to win prizes. All right, we're well, gonna go back. Uh, can I ask a quick question? Yes. Sorry, uh, I'm asking for a, a teacher of mine who's having issues with her audio, but she's a math teacher. And if she's holding up work, uh, like problems, uh, how would she do it so that they don't, they don't see a mirror image of uh, functions that she's holding up? What would be right, the So there's a couple of ways to do that. I'm gonna cheat right now and, and do okay. this with you. Let's say I was a teacher and I wanted to show something just that I could hold up. I would just hold it up, do opposite your mirror. Keep in mind, it's a camera. So I might just go, hey, right here, you can see we're doing this. I might do that, All right? That's one possibility. Okay. Or, or if I'm that person, I, I want to know, are, do they have this on something that's digital? So if they have it on anything that's digital, like a PDF or an image file, they could then have that in another window and just share that window and all they have to, then everybody's seeing exactly what they're seeing. Like I'm showing PowerPoint, you would show the image of that math formula or what they're doing in the math instead of me showing PowerPoint. Mike, okay. can you show like you did this morning, you showed the like a dry erase board essentially. I oh, I forgot the dry board. Yes, thank you, Sherry, yes. Yeah, that, so here's a cool the thing. Teacher. Yeah, yeah, super, super important. Thanks, Sherry. Uh, so that is one of the items that we can share that I didn't get to, the whiteboard. So I'm going to show that to everybody right now. With a whiteboard, I can literally write. Now, this is my, this is me using a mouse. So you can see how awful it is trying to write my name. 
right? But some of you might have draw boards that you're able to connect to your computer and do this with, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that route. I would, I would use text and I would just type, right? But I can still spotlight things like I could earlier, all right? So I can still do stuff like that. Um, I can show rewards and do all different stuff. So that's the whiteboard. You can do text. You can, you can draw shapes, right? So I can do a Ziggly. I can do all different things. You can just play in here on the whiteboard. And that's called the whiteboard. You all just showed me, you got to see me share where that came from. Just in case you didn't, I'm going to do it again. So I'm going to share my screen first. Then down here where it says share, I'm going to click share. And then you're going to see whiteboard right there. Then I'm going to click share. And now you can all play in the whiteboard. If you're the host, you can play in the whiteboard. So that's super cool to be able to do. And because of Sherry reminding me of that, we're going to do another thing right now. We're going to dump the whiteboard. And we're going to show you how you can annotate like I just did on, let me just hop back out to my actual screen. There we go. I'm going to show you how you can annotate even on websites. So watch this. Let's say I want to show my students an educational website. I want to highlight some stuff on the website. I go up to annotate, which uh, is what I just showed you earlier. You can, you can see it on the screen. When you're, anytime you're sharing the screen, it's right next to pause share. There's a button that says annotate. It pops down and it gives you options on how to annotate. So I can now say, hey, everybody, check this out. Notice how it created an arrow on the web page. Or check this out or check this out. And this is just a website. So you can do this to any website that you have open when you choose that window. How did I choose that window? I went up here and I chose that window right there, right? And then I hit, and now because I'm annotating, it's struggling to, uh, to stop annotating, actually click the button. So I'm gonna stop annotating so I can actually do my normal arrow with that instead of uh, the annotation. So we're gonna stop that. And then there we go. Uh, so that's a simple way that you can annotate on websites or the whiteboard. So those are all great options. I'm going to show you one more trick, Joe. The, this trick oh. I did not show this Could you morning. show us what it looks like annotating from your screen? Yeah, I can do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share, well, yes, to a degree. I'm okay. going to share my screen here. And then I'm going to annotate. I was doing this earlier and you didn't know it. Okay. So see how I'm pushing on annotate right there? And then I picked, when I annotated, I was using Spotlight earlier. That little button. Remember I was doing this earlier in Zoom? Yeah. That's what that was. Okay. So I'm annotating even on the main screen. And then I can choose to share that screen or not. The trick I didn't show this morning that would be really cool for teachers, anybody trying to show, like if you want to go through 20 images and you don't want to have 20 windows up to do that, I would create a photo album in iPhoto or whatever photo album you use. And then I would share a portion of my screen and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So you could share only a portion of one of your screens and just keep flipping through the pictures on that portion of the screen. Watch me do this. So I'm going to open my photos right now. Mike, there's a question before you go any further. How do yep. I prevent my students or athletes from annotating on my screen? All right. Do they have I, access to annotate? Yeah, I can answer that. No problem. Let me go to a picture. Um, let me go to a, an example that's... Good to go. Okay, so I am going to show you an example here real quick. All right, so how do you stop them from annotating? Well, can let me ask you all this. Can you annotate right now? Do any of you see annotate on your screen? You shouldn't because there's nothing. You'd only be annotating yourself. Do you see the issue? So only the person running the meeting can annotate because nobody else could see it anyways because I'm the only one sharing the screen. If I let them share their screens, they could annotate. So keep that in mind. If you annotate, let them, Mike, can I annotate on you? Because I'm a co-host. If, co if I hand it over you sharing screen. Okay. But then you're, you would have to be sharing your screen of me to annotate over me. I mean, so you know what I mean? It'd be right. a little complicated there. Right. Okay. Uh, but, but yes, that's possible. But I said I was going to share a portion. This is really cool. So watch this. I'm going to go share. Uh, wait, make sure you're all seeing my screen. Uh, I don't think I'm sharing right now. So. Let me share my screen. Right now it's just you. Okay. Yep. All right. So now I'm sharing my screen and I'm going to click share. And then you're going to see this, all the options pop up. And then I can go to advanced. See that little advanced up there? 
advanced allows me to do a portion of the screen or if I wanted to use another camera. So I'm gonna do portion of screen, right? And then I am now gonna to go to my iPhoto. That's the portion it's choosing to share now, but I'm gonna to go to my iPhoto and I'm going to choose a portion and I'm gonna click on my images. Now, if I'm a teacher, watch what I can do. I can change the space. Now, let's say I wanna hop between the photos and the photo album. So I wanna to go to the next one. Let's try and see if it lets you see it, it lets me. So you can advance, go through your stuff. This is all like company images. Sorry, you're looking at me, but um, you could see like shirts we have, all different stuff we have. And now you could see as a teacher, Joe, how you could have all your pictures set up in some kind of file that you just share that portion of the screen. Does that make sense? Yeah, make, yeah absolutely. So that's a cool little feature you can do. I have used that in the past when I didn't know how to use PowerPoint the right way, now I do. I used to go into PowerPoint and just show the portion here. I'll show you all a, good, a, a cheating trick on, on PowerPoint if you wanna share a portion of the screen. I would just share like this section of PowerPoint. But the problem is you can't do like annotations or anything like, you can't have any animation or transitions. So I, I don't do that anymore. But that was just a quick example of how you could do that. Let me go back, let's stop share. And now we are back to the main screen. And now uh, any last questions before we take you into the cool survey at the end and the prizes? Yeah, Mike, it's Raven. I finally yes. thought of my question. <laughs> it cool. Was, it was about the registration process for the meeting. So I recall seeing the link on Facebook, clicking that link and then being taken to a registration page. And then once I registered, I automatically got your instructions on how to access the meeting. So my question is, did you have the power to um, edit what that registration page looked like and then also what that response email looked like? There's very little. You can, but it's very little. Uh, I can actually go in and show that to everybody. So when I was showing you how to set up a meeting earlier, when we were going over that, yes, uh, I would go into a browser, go right there. So we're going to go there right now. And when you're setting up a meeting, notice, see how it says invite attendees and it says copy invitation. If you open that up, that's pretty much what they're getting. The only thing you can do at all is down here, and we didn't go over this, there's a registration button and there's an email settings. So we had 75, you can see how many people tonight, 75 people signed up for tonight, right? We have email settings where you can choose whether to send them a confirmation email. Now this is where, this is where you can edit. You can edit that email. Okay. And you hit edit and you can change the language in the email. You can change the subject line. So I believe all of this is going to stay in there. All of this is going to stay in it. But you can add language right there. And you can add language at the end. So you can add to two parts of that email, confirmation email. That's all you can do. Does that answer that, Raven? It does. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, it's a good question. It's an important question that you have. And you can brand. So that's how when you got the invitation, you all saw my brand was because I added our banner into the template, right? So when I set up the meeting, I went, after I, after I set it up, I went into here just like we're doing now. And I looked at email, I looked at branding. Uh, you can look if you want to add polls. And you can look at, now interesting. So I must've added a poll to my practice one earlier, the extra polls and not this one, because it's only showing one. Um, and it mentions live streaming. Uh, we mentioned that very earlier today. We could have had this on Facebook Live if we wanted, that kind of a thing. So that is all there. Uh, so great question again. All right, so here we go. I am now one going more to- question, Mike. You yep. have one more question sitting out there in chat and can they're you asking if you can review PowerPoint. Yeah, if I can show you how I set it up. All right, so I'm gonna now reverse what I did and I'm gonna reverse engineer this so you can see it. Uh, let me go share my screen for you so you can see me do this. So I'm gonna first, do the opposite of what I did so you can see it happen. All right, right now my PowerPoint is on a, is on a separate desktop than my main computer. It's, so let me go to where desktop two. All right, behave, there we go and behave. All right, there's PowerPoint. And I wanted to make it so that my computer could, could run PowerPoint and run this at the same time. So what I did is I popped out 
And if my computer's running on desktop two, I made sure PowerPoint was on desktop one, right? And by which it already is, you can see it there. But let me move it back to desktop two so everything's there. So this is how your computer's normally gonna look. You got your, your PowerPoint open, you got your other stuff open. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom out on my computer. And in fact, watch this, I'm gonna even delete desktop one because that's normally how you're gonna see it. And I would see it like this if I zoomed out and I could see all my windows. I'm going to add a new desktop right there. See how that popped in? I'm going to take my PowerPoint. I'm going to drop it in there. Then I'm going to go to PowerPoint, and I'm going to put play from this slide, because that's where we're at. Play from this slide. And now, Mike, I take it this is only for Mac people that can follow what you're saying uh, right PC now. people can also do it, but it just works. It's the same concept. PC people have different windows they can use. Okay. Uh, and I have desktops. They have windows. Okay. All right. Well, good question, but that is the difference. So now I have it playing, but back here where we're doing our Zoom, I'm going to stop the share. You're not seeing that PowerPoint because if we had it on the same screen, we couldn't run Zoom because PowerPoint runs whatever desktop it's on. It controls everything and you can't do anything else. So that's super, super important that you don't run it on the same. So now I'm going to go share screen. And now you're gonna see how it looks when it's running. Notice it's down, let me go share screen. Ruby, I'm gonna answer, hey, Ruby just had a good question. I'm gonna answer that again uh, in a second. So thanks, Ruby. Uh, now you're seeing my screen where I hit share and right there is PowerPoint running, right? So now I'm gonna click share. Now we're in PowerPoint and it's running. And if you were at the start of today, you, uh, you saw me do a little bit of this uh, in PowerPoint. By the way, this is the first shirt everybody's going to have a shot at winning. So you can win a Can I Kiss You shirt. You can win a Voices of Courage book. This is 12 survivors sharing their stories, 10 women, two men. Uh, you can win the Can I Kiss You book, which is a how-to book on setting up boundaries, consent, healthy relationships, everything from 12 to any age. We have people in the military who are in their 50s and 60s who tell us they, they really enjoy the book for their relationships. So all different ages. And this is a DVD for parents called Help My Teen is Dating. Some of you are going to win these right now. We're just going to do a quick, quick, allow a few people to win these. Because if I was doing a live program, because we have some speakers watching this, I'd be giving these away. So I'm giving them away when I do a virtual program. I'm just going to ship them to the people. This is a cool way to incentivize people to get involved. If you're running a business, we had some business owners on earlier today, and they love this idea. They're like, wow, we could give away prizes. I'm like, yes, it incentivizes people to get on this. I know some schools that'll give away prom tickets if their students go onto the virtual session with us, right? So there's cool things you can do like that. So those are the prizes. All you do to win a prize right now is share with me something you're gonna use from today's session. Now, we have a lot of people on here, so it's gonna sound crazy, but just unmute and yell, I wanna win. And the first person I hear do that, I'm gonna give I you a chance win. to win. All I right, win. right there, pause, the first person. So you said, I wanna win, who are you? Connie Rose. Hi, Connie. Uh, thanks for joining us. What are you going to use from today? That's all you got to answer. And I'm going to give you the prize you want. Uh, virtual training. All right. So that you're going to use this for doing virtual training for your clients because Connie's also a speaker. Awesome. Which item did you want, Connie? I want the survivor book. All right. You got it. Very cool. Next person to yell, I want to win. I want to win. All right. Very cool. I saw that time. I think that was Paula, right, Paula? You bet. All right, Paula, what are you going to use from today? Uh, how about the... I'm going to do the, I'm going to set up a time to do a Zoom call. All right. Very cool. All right. Next, I want to win. I want to win. Uh, wait, sorry. I forgot to, to ask Paul what she wants to win. Paul, I need you to pop in and tell us before I let Joe. What do you want to win, Paula? Uh, how about a t-shirt? All right. You got a shirt. All you do if you win, by the way, some people this morning forgot to do this. Connie, Paula, and about to be Joe, you need to email me where I'm shipping your prize. <laughs> Otherwise, we, we have no way to send something to you. So please make sure you email me. You're going to get an email from me by tomorrow with a link to this whole recording. Uh, you could just reply to that email, but I need an address, if it's a shirt, what size, that kind of stuff. All right, Joe, you're up. What are you going to use from today? I'm going to use the breakout rooms. Very cool. And what item did you want to win? Um, I'll take a shirt. All right, you got a shirt. I'm going to do one last person. Somebody Mike, you want to win? Mike. We got we got someone coming in with a text who only has um they they don't have audio or video. They've texted in. I want to win. Just so oh, you know. Okay, cool. Who are so who are they? It, it's Lee Bunch. All right, Lee, if you can text what you're gonna use and which item you want, we'll do that. 
So Sherry's going to let us know the answer to that. Right. Hey, did, did everybody just notice how cool having a co-host is? Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, no, he, because, like because conduct, I would have saw that because I'm looking at the slide. He'd like to conduct meetings. All right. And what item did, did he want? Hasn't said yet. Okay, that's okay. You'll see it and you can let me know even later. Yep. That's, that's how cool this is, folks. So by having a co-host, they can catch these things I'm not going to catch when I'm looking at the main screen for everybody. So that, that's why you, I talked about earlier, having that co-host really helps. All right. Now, next up is this. We're giving all of you right now a link to a website with all the equipment we use, how we do all of this, and we're going to end up giving you uh, the video from tonight. So you're going to get to see all of this if you want to go back and review things. We're also going to give you the ebook of Can I Kiss You, the ebook of Voices of Courage, the audiobook of Voices of Courage. We're giving you my own materials, all of them, plus the how-to of all the equipment and the setup from today. And I know Ruby was asking about that earlier too, about, hey, Mike, can you explain um, you know, how you set this up and what equipment you use? And some of that we showed earlier, but I want to make sure you get the list. And the list is here. You go to mikesgiveaways.com. And when you get there, you're going to see this survey over here. Right? And when you do that survey, I'll go to another screen. When you get to the bottom, it'll say done submit. So all you do is go to mikesgiveaways.com. You can do this on your phone right now. You could do this on another browser right now if you want it. I'm going to show you once we're done with this, the survey. So you can all do this. This is super, super cool to be able to do. All right. And by the way, I'm going to show you for speakers uh, why this is amazing. And schools love this if you're able to do this. Your clients love this because how helpful this is. So once you're done with the survey, and you're all going to see this tonight, it's going to give you all these links. All right, so the only difference is this is my normal screenshot. So it's giving the handouts to my normal speech. You won't see that there probably today. But you'll see another link up here that says click here and it'll take you to our website that'll have all the equipment that I've used today and equipment I didn't use today that you might wanna buy if you don't have a good one, like a good camera. We talked about that earlier. It gives you the cameras to use. It gives you links to green screens. It gives you all of that all by doing the survey. Now, I'm going to click ahead. If you wanted to get on my email list, it shows you how to do that. There's our podcast. If you want to meet me on social media, here's how you do this. Why am I showing you this, even though you're not one of my speaking audiences? Because there are speakers watching, and they should be seeing that you treat this just like it was if you were in a live audience, and you should be letting the people see this stuff so they can find you on social media. They can create a relationship with you. So that's all helpful information for them to do. Mike, um, sorry to interrupt. No, you're good. I, I have a question on the prizes. Connie, what did you pick for your prize? Because Lee is thinking he would like the same prize that Connie picked. And here's the good news. They can both have the same prize. No, I know, but he, I, we're trying to figure out what it was. Okay. Oh, the Survivor's Book? Book, okay. He was thinking buttons. So um, you're doing the Voices of Courage? Yes, oh, that's yeah. the Voices of Courage, yep. Yeah, but I might change that, Mike, since it's included in your thing and do your other book. That's fine. That's fine. So if, if, they, if you want to just let me know in an email, Connie, that's fine. You got that, it. That works. All right. And this is the nice thing about meeting. It's so easy to be able to have these conversations. So normally, I would have that screen you just saw in a live audience. What are the questions? And while people are doing their survey, I take questions. So, and I might even have example questions up on the screen. All right, so that's really, in, you want to be really intentional about that. You want to have a plan to how you do all of this, super important. So I'm going to stop sharing screen right now because I want to take you to the final element, the survey that you just all did and why that is so important when you're doing this. So I'm going to share screen and take you to how I did that. That is a SurveyMonkey survey. So SurveyMonkey.com. It's a simple service. It's way cheaper than a lot of other services that are out there that do the exact same thing. So we're going to go to that screen, which is right here. I'm going to hit share. I'm going to take you there. And I'm now going to switch over to SurveyMonkey. We've been, there's my SurveyMonkey account. There it is. Leaning, learning Zoom with Mike. I can speak. There we go. I'm going to click on Learning Zoom with Mike. Let me annotate just to make it easier to follow. Just a reminder again. And you should all see the learning Zoom with Mike Domish there. I'm going to click on it. That's today's survey. All right. So I went into there. I created a survey. All right. Now, I can now see everybody's results 
immediately. And if I was working with a school or a company, I can send them all the results, which is incredibly valuable for them. Because if I was working with somebody and I was a professional Zoom presenter and I said, look, 100% of the people said they either agree or strongly agree that today made them more comfortable with that technology you hired me for them to use. Well, they're going to want to know that, right? If I scroll down and, oh my gosh, look at this, 92% said they've gained new skills today. And the other 7% said they still agree with that. So 92 are strongly agree. Can you see why schools, clients, military, they're going to want to know that, right? It's super helpful. I'm going to share all the open answers you gave. They're not going to see who answered them. I'm going to keep it confidential, but I'm going to share all these so they can see everybody's comments, so they can see all the takeaways. This is, by the way, if you're a teacher, this is priceless because you could turn to the parents and go, here's what everybody said they learned today, right? That's really, really valuable stuff to be able to do. And it's all here. I, I am also on my website. Post the giveaway link when you get a chance. The, the mikesgiveaways.com? Yes. So we can just put that in chat. Is that what you're referring to? Yes. We, we can, yeah, we can just type that into the chat. So thanks, okay. Sherry. We'll do that. We'll type, let me stop share. And I'll type that right into the chat box to everyone. So I, as the, the person running this, can do that. It's super easy. Mike's giveaways.com. And by the way, you can do that survey anytime tonight. You're good. So you can do that when we get off this. And that's this, you can do it on a computer, a phone, wherever you want to do it. Uh, what we'll do is we'll tell people, do the survey so you can prove you stayed to the end of the training. So if they're a student or if their company's making them go to your training, you now tell them I'll do the survey so they can prove they were at the end. Well, now everybody takes the survey. So you get incredible survey results. That's everything, folks. SurveyMonkey allows you to embed this onto your website like I did. It allows you to do all of that, but that's, that's a whole different level. We're, just, we're focusing on Zoom tonight and how to incorporate things with Zoom. So as I'm about to wrap up, any last questions? I, if I was speaking, I would Good never questions. ask a question, by the way, but this is a Zoom how-to, so I will allow it. Two questions, one from Ruby. So do I get the list of tools after I complete the survey? Yes, and that's why, you, that's the incentive to get everybody whenever you're doing a survey to do the survey. They don't get it unless they complete the survey. So yes, that is important. Otherwise, there's no incentive for them to take the survey and, and you have no feedback. And it says, will we get a link to the survey? Uh, the survey is the Mike's giveaway links that we just put in the chat. Okay. So that is the link to that the survey. The, the, the link to my website with all of the, the, the things you can use, the equipment, that's when you complete the survey and the screen switches and shows all the links, that's the first link, is the link to my website with all the equipment and everything. So once again, you got to complete the survey. So I want to say as we wrap up, I want to thank all of you. This is a time of chaos for a lot of people. This is a time of fear for a lot of people. Uh, uh, people in my industry, uh, this is normally, well, for example, one of their busiest times of the year, and they're, they have nothing for months potentially now. Uh, there are people in the food industry that could be shut down for months. This is scary. Teachers trying to teach when they can't be in the classroom, that can be confusing and scary. Zoom is a great way to allow people to connect as human beings with each other, even though we can't be in person with each other physically. It's just, and in these times, I think that's so important. So I'm video chatting with a lot of my friends just to network and have connection during this time of supporting each other. Zoom is wonderful for that. So feel free to use that. I want to thank you all for joining me. I will have the video by the morning. I'll be sending emails out to you with the video link that you can watch. Uh, and that'll also have the link back to the website. Uh, to give you like the survey and all that. I'll include that in that email also, but it'll take Zoom a few hours to process this video. Uh, so I'll do that in the morning and you'll have that all from me. Thank you all very much for joining. Thank Mike, you. Thank Mike. you very much. Thank you, Mike. Oh, thank you're welcome. You. Thank you very much, Mike. <laughs>